Hey guys, welcome to today's video. In this hands-on lab, we will be integrating Facebook and Google Social Connect uh, with our Cognito Identity Provider. So if you have not saw the previous video, just go in the description or the top right hand and there you will find how you can configure your Cognito with .NET Core application in an end-to-end -end demo. In the second part, we also covered how you can add the MFA support in case you needed to add so. So that is also available in the description that you can follow. Both of these links are hands-on labs and end-to-end -end integration providing each and every detail of how you integrate. Well, some of you guys did post a query to me uh, that they wanted to see how does the uh, Facebook or the Google will connect out. So let's begin. So guys, before we continue, just quickly, if you are coming here for the first time, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And watch this video till the end. There are very important steps, although very simple, but quite important. Just don't miss out anything. Any small wrong configuration can be dangerous because we are dealing with the managed identities and identities like the base of your site authentication and everything. So let's start. So doing that is quite simple. Uh, we already have a user. We already have this user pool configured out. If you are missing out something, just check out the previous videos, uh, how we have done that. So to integrate with the social providers, be it Facebook, Google, Amazon or whatever it is, you, what you need to do is you need to go into the identity provider section right over here. Once you click, you will get a list of available identity providers that you can use. Now, Open ID Connect is the default with which if, if you are not using Facebook or Google or the standard ones which are available, you can connect with any of the identity providers using Open ID Connect, which is more or less the default uh, standard for authentication. Anyways, let's move to Facebook and uh, it asks for three things. Facebook App ID, App Secret and Authorized Scope. So uh, where we are going to find that, uh, just go to developers.facebook.com. On the top right, you will see my app. Click on that. So I have a few apps that I have been testing with uh, already configured. If you need details, uh, you can check out this page from Amazon, uh, which defines what settings and configurations do you need to do on your uh, Facebook or Google app. In case you still get some problem, just put it in the comment section and we will try to solve it out. Anyways, so uh, these are the configurations that we need to do. Now, uh, app ID you will get from here. You need to go to the basic section over here and it will show both the app ID and app secret. Uh, let's just copy it and put it over here. I'll get the app secret as well. Now, uh, the important part over here is authorized scopes. You need to get public profile and email. These two scopes are required. And how can we get that? The value of these. So if you go to the same page, uh, this link is in description. Uh, you can see for Facebook, we need uh, these two profiles. Likewise, for Google, we have profile, email, and open ID, which are like the standard one for the open ID. Anyways, for Facebook, let's just copy these value and put it over here and save it. Now, if you want to quickly test out your settings, the fastest way to do that is go into the domain name and you will see an option over here. Uh, I think in the app, yeah, in the app client settings, you will see an option called hosted UI. If you click that, it will show you a page and we are not getting Facebook over here. Although we have added that, why we are not getting? because we have to enable Facebook from here as well. So we are working on this web client to this particular app and to add uh, Facebook, we need to pass in Facebook as a provider over here. We do the save changes. And now if we hit the la launch hosted UI, we will see connect with Facebook. So uh, now coming over here, if you see uh, it has uh, we are getting all the details from Facebook that how do we map the identity of the user. 
so uh, id is fine but the email all of uh, the attributes that we are getting uh, facebook attributes that we are getting we can define how do they map to our internal id for example email uh, if you want to enable we want to capture the email uh, we can just set it like this and uh, if we want to let's say gender it should be available as well uh, let's see no yeah here it is gender and likewise we have uh, first, first name uh, which is here given name last name which maps to our family name and what else do we have uh, we have our date of birth so let's see birth date yes uh, this is birth date this looks fine middle name we don't uh, let's see if we have the facebook middle name as well yes middle name so you can uh, set in and configure all these values and press the save button uh, that will configure and define all your values so likewise if you draw to google uh, you can do that let's try to quickly see uh, so if you want to go to google the process is more or less same the documentation and guidelines are defined over here on this page how do you enable that if you still want to see any of the other configurations uh, be it google or amazon uh, where you are facing problem just let us know in the comment section and we will try to do a quick video on that as well anyways so this seems to work fine now let's just fire our uh, application and try to see like if it works or not uh, point to note over here is like it's more of a configuration from the web portal and we have not done any changes in our client application let's just see how it behaves all right go into secured area and we are presented with a page i'll press continue with facebook and uh, we are getting our first message again uh, i have not fixed that error intentionally and the reason for this is because you also need to see these errors like what errors you can face and only if you see it you will get to know otherwise uh, if i if this is a normal hello world <laughs> demo like many other similar links on youtube uh, you will never actually see like uh, what you need to fix anyways let's just close this and fix this issue uh, so whenever we are configuring and uh, whenever we are configuring an OAuth application, we need to provide a return URL which should match. So how do we do that? You need to go into the domain setting, just copy this value, put it in comment when the URL, and uh, we need to get a response URL. So where will we find that? This is this one. So it's the same uh, path. Your application name. Uh, your domain name followed by OAuth2 followed by ID response. So just copy this complete path, uh, make a note of it and go over here, Facebook settings, Facebook login and then settings. And here you will find an option for OAuth redirect URL. Uh, just ignore the other URLs that I've been doing a sort of testing around that and paste it. And you are done. Now let's try to run the application again and see like uh, what do we get. We press the secured area. We press continue with Facebook. Okay, right. So the problem we are facing is uh, the URL. Although we press the save button, uh, the URL is not saved, and the reason for that was uh, the localhost URL. So if you click, if you see over here, uh, it gives an error. The localhost redirects are automatically allowed. So we need to remove this. 
so this is quite a old application that we are using and at that time we need to select the local host as well let's try now uh, i think this is saved and what you can do is and you can check it over here if this is allowed or not okay this seems to be valid and now let's just go and try again uh, so we click on secure area we press continue with facebook page open it should give us a prompt all right so we have logged in and you see uh, this is the username and again we might need to see how the claims are being mapped for facebook and that we can do in the attribute mapping so we don't have the name right so that how do we do that uh, what are we printing actually over here just let's quickly check that as well identity name and if we go to startup we can see like which property is name being mapped to so it's mapped to username claim and we don't have the username over here so that's the problem so what we can do for this case is, is we can map the email and again uh, let's try to see if we have email and let's map this to our username let's see if this works out i am not uh, so sure i am not so sure of all right this cannot be done actually the claims would be available in email but we wanted to show it as a username well one way of doing that is we define our identities in such a way that uh, they are based on the email and not directly on uh, e uh, username the reason being the email is something that is universally constant and it would be available uh, in all the uh, flows username in fact is not and if you see over here i have uh, the id uh, facebook id also joined so this id is automatically created all right i think uh, if we want to change the name of the user probably we would need to call the uh, admin apis uh, and via the standard path it would not be available the username since it is not coming from behind from facebook side facebook uses the email id for login so uh, that is uh, automatically generated i think this is your id number prefixed by facebook so that's it guys for this video uh, if you want any other steps if you want me to look into and show like uh, how to change the name as well or other uh, things uh, i'll try to do that just put that in the comment section and i'll and if i get uh, some requests around that i will for sure try to do that thanks for joining thanks for watching the video uh, if you like the video again a humble request press the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel if not already thanks for watching and have a good day